All right. So I want to just briefly introduce you to multiple regression. Now, multiple regression is a very, very deep topic in which a lot of work has been done. Um, and obviously, we don't have time to go into it here. However, I think it's worthwhile at least to introduce the basic concepts so that you know what it is. Um, again, you can take whole classes on the topic of multiple regression. Um, but just briefly, we're just going to try and give you a, a very simple intuition for what it does and what it's capable of. Um, so the basic idea of very simple regression, right, of just using one predictor variable, is very straightforward. It's just like slope-intercept in a two-dimensional space, where you have a predictor variable and a predicted variable, right? So you only have two dimensions there. So one goes up, does the other go up? What multiple regression allows you to do is add in as many dimensions as you want. So imagine you knew both height and foot size. You could use both of those, perhaps, to um, make an even better guess about you know, what the predicted shoe size is going to be. Or if you have multiple other variables that are related to the variable that you care about, what multiple regression allows you to do is use information from all of them to make an even better prediction than you could if you just used one like you did with um, the basic regression. So multiple regression is used when you have multiple independent variables predicting a dependent variable. Um, and again, the equation looks exactly the same. You just basically have extra, extra variables in there. So if you look at it, x predicted is now our beta coefficient for our first variable, x1, plus our beta coefficient for our second variable, x2, plus our um, intercept. And again, you can think of this right here as being in a three-dimensional space, right? So it has x, y, and z coordinates rather than just x and y coordinates. And if you add more variables, you get into what mathematicians call hyperspace. And essentially you have you know, four dimensions, five dimensions. And although we can't necessarily think of this graphically, the basic idea is the same, is that you're just using more information that's related to what you want to know to be able to make the most accurate prediction possible. Um, interestingly, you can, you can get this sense that maybe the two variables that you're using to try and predict the variable that you care about they themselves might be correlated, right? And so this needs to be taken into account by the multiple regression model, or you can do what's called overfitting your data, right? So if you have two independent variables, you need to know the effect of each of them that's sort of unique to them, right? So if you knew, for example, that somebody smoked cigarettes and ate too much food, and you wanted to predict, you know, say, the, the prediction for heart disease, Right? Well, maybe it's the case that people that eat a lot of food also smoke cigarettes. And you need to take account for that in your model, or else your prediction is going to be too high. Right? So essentially, this is done mathematically in multiple regression, um, taking only the unique contribution of each variable to the prediction so that you're not overguessing sort of what you're what you're looking at. Um, but you have to be really careful here. And this is why there's, you know, you can read full textbooks on multiple regression, there's an entire class on multiple regression, is because capturing the unique contribution of each variable, there's no one way you can do this. Um, and not only that, but it can't be done perfectly, right? It gets hard to sort of parcel these things out. Um, regression is working off of correlation, so because you don't know sort of the causal underlying structure, it's very difficult to know what exactly to parcel out of where. All you can do is sort of make your best guess mathematically, and the tools that we have allow us to do this. However, even here, there's a number of different ways in which you can do this. There's forward regression, there's backward regression, you can create a full model, right? There's all kinds of different ways that you're, you can sort of partial out the unique variance, right? Um, and so you just have to be a little bit careful, because this is where it turns into sort of an art. What's the best, most accurate way to understand your data? Well, there's no one single sort of right answer for a question like that with multiple regression. Um, so just a word of caution, you do need to be kind of careful with multiple regression if you're using it. You can't just use it, you know, haphazardly, um, like, you know, just throw everything into the model and see what happens. You have to have some understanding of how the variance is being partialed out between your different independent predicting variables. Um, and even beyond multiple regression, as I mentioned earlier, there are more sophisticated techniques that can allow you to at least make a first approximation of a causality inference, um, such as structural equation modeling. So multiple regression really completes, I think, what the sort of basic level of statistics that, that you know, any psychologist or social scientist should know, 
Um, and again, you know, here we've only had time to really briefly delve into any of these any of these um, individual topics. Obviously, we jam you know basically two semesters of of uh, statistics for the social sciences into one two hour lecture. So clearly, you know, we couldn't get deeply into all of them. Hopefully, this gives you a basic intuition about every single one that we've covered. Um, but up to multi multiple regression is sort of the basic toolkit. Um, and as I mentioned before, there's a whole bunch more advanced statistics that you can learn as well. And, you know, you can learn about any one of these in a much more robust fashion in statistics classes. Um, and I recommend doing so, especially if you're looking to go into a, a research career um, eventually. And, of course, most programs require you to do so. So thank you very much, and I hope this has been a really helpful tutorial on statistics for the social sciences.